Hello, Math Scholars! We are back. It's our first day after spring break. There's beautiful snow out. I wanted to stay home and hike in the woods all day, but I'm here teaching you guys some math. So, it's 7-3. I wish it was easier than it's going to be. It's, there's some challenging parts about this lesson. We all have our notebook out and our calculators ready to roll. You need your calculator. Who's excited to be at school? Yeah! <laughs> Normally they give me a warm round of applause, but not today. Woo! So, let's start with geometric sequences. Last week, well, two weeks ago, we did arithmetic sequences when they add a constant amount between each term. Today, it's geometric sequence. They will be multiplying by a constant amount between each term. The number that is the constant multiplier is called the common ratio, and you'll be seeing me abbreviate that with an R. Go ahead and jot that down, and I'll give you a second, and then we'll try this example. All right, we're back in live. So let's look at the sequence. We're back. What is going on here from the 5 to the 15 to the 45? They're timesing by 3 every time. We're going to call that our common ratio. It's our R value. And then what is the first term in the sequence? We're going to call that A1. You would think they would use a G1 for geometric sequence, but your book does use an A for both arithmetic and geometric sequences. Okay. Let's say that you had a friend and they're like, I cannot figure out how to find that common ratio. What would you tell them to do to find it? Take the second term and divide it by the first term. So you can always find that by do second term, divide by first term. Because they're not always going to be as clear cut as the sequence was. Sometimes they'll have decimals. Okay. Yeah. So let's look at this one. This one is an example. Um, we need to figure out whether it's geometric. So I would take this 10 and divide it by 4 to see what they're multiplying by to get from term 1 to term 2. What's 10 divided by 4? Now, you need to verify that 10 times 2.5 is 18. And it's not. So this is not a geometric sequence. Make sense? So you do want the calculators handy to be able to work like that. Okay, let's go to the next slide. What would we do on this slide to find out our what potentially could be our constant multiplier? 125 divided by 625. Type that in for me. 0.2. And then go ahead and see if 125 times 0.2 is 25. It is. And try 25 times 0.2 to see if it's 5. And it is. So if your answer is yes, go ahead and jot down what that constant multiplier is, the R value, and go ahead and jot down what the first term in the sequence is. Because those two things will be necessary to write out the equation. We'll get to that shortly. Cool. Questions so far? Yeah, I'll stay here for a sec. All right, so here's our first formula of the day that I'm adding to the formula board. It's right here. You can use this formula to come up with an equation anytime you're trying to um, find the equation of a geometric sequence. I already have it on the board. I actually put the R in parentheses. That's what I tend to do personally. And why do you think I put purple underlines under A1 and R? That's where you are going to be putting numbers in. Yep. So, oh, even the book uses parentheses in this one. For this particular one, they put a 3 in for A1. That means the first term in their sequence is a 3. And they put a 2 in for R, which is the con common ratio, which means they're multiplying by 2 each time. So this would be 3, 6, 9, 12, etc. Um, this is just an example they have. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry, because they're at multiply 3. You get a ticket, you just save the day. Multiply by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3. What's 18 times 3? Oh, I'm messing up. I apologize to everyone in the video, I'm having trouble using my brain. So we're going to start with a 3. The constant multiplier is a 2, so Lexi's correct. Times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 2 is 48. And just so we're clear how the formula works, this formula could help you find any term. We could use this formula to find the 50th term. Do you know what you would do? You would just plop a 50 in for n. But it's probably going to be a really big number. I'll do it in my calculator real quick. 3 times 2 to the 50 minus 1. 
the 50th term would be 1.69 times 10 to the 15th. Because these grow really fast. They grow exponentially. Okay. We good on the formula? Okay. We're going to use the formula to write out the equation for this sequence. Then we will use the formula to find a7. Forgot to do that last period. Okay, so two things we need to know are the first term and the common ratio. What's the first term? What's the common ratio? That's enough to get you the equation written out. So the equation is straight off the board. A n equals A1 times R to the n minus 1. We'll make sure you agree with that. Now we need to use our formula to find the seventh term. So we're finding A7. We will just simply stick a 7 in for n. So 4 times 5 to the 6th power. It's pretty big. 625, zero, zero. Sound about right? We'll do one more like that before we get to a hard one. We're going to find the equation of this, and then we're going to use our equation to find the seventh term. So what is our first term in our series sequence? 152. What is our constant multiplier, common ratio? Negative 1 half, negative 0.5. I'll go ahead and write out my formula. A n equals A 1 times R to the n minus 1. Now everybody agree with the formula we've come up with? How will we use the formula to find the seventh term? Plop a seven in for n. A7 would be 152 times negative 0.5 is 7 times 1 power. Negative 0.5. I got 2.375, but check me on that. We're okay with that? All right, so it's going to start getting a bit harder because it's not going to be as easy to get all the information that you're going to need, the A1 and the R, um, on the next few problems. Yep, we'll keep it. All right, let's take a peek at this one. The provided information is actually the fourth term, being 12, and the common ratio. So at least we lucked out and they're giving us the common ratio, but they're not giving us A1. So we're going to be on our own to solve for A1. Let me go ahead and explain how we're going to do it. We're going to use the formula of the day, the formula I put on the board. We're going to put pieces and parts in, but we don't know A1. So A1 will be what we are solving for, okay? So let's go ahead and put the 2 in for R. We're going to take this 4, and the 4 is going to be our N value, because the fourth term equals 12. So the 12 will go over here. So when n equals 4, the whole entire equation would be a 12. Does it make sense how I said that? Mm -hmm. And then we just solve. So solving this is not bad at all. You just calculate out what 2 to the third is. What's 2 to the third? 8. And then you just take that 8 and divide it over to the other side. What's 12 divided by 8? Perfect. And that's, now you have all the required information you need. You have your a1 and you have your r. Does that make sense? Do we go too fast? Okay. I, ha I do have to write the final answer out, though. So the final answer has A1 in it, and it has R in it, and it's an equation for the series. Ooh, they're mentioning to graph the sequence. Um, if you do want to graph this, it would be a series of dots. Let's just go ahead and do that, because I do want to show you what the graph would look like. I would just make a chart and then I would graph it with dots. You still don't want to connect the dots just like what, two weeks ago. Let's just make a real quick chart and in term. Term 1 is a 1.5. Term 2 would be twice as large because the constant multiplier is 2. So 3. 
Term three would be twice as large, so a six. Term four would be a 12. That probably would be off my graph at that part, at that point. So one, two. Um, one, one and a half would be about here. You'd make a dot. Two, three would be about here. You'd make a dot. Three, six would be about here. You'd make a dot. But if you would think about connecting the dots, it wouldn't be that exponential growth curve that we've learned. Right? You wouldn't want to actually connect. Does that make sense? If you go to graph it in your graphing world in the calculator, it would show you the shape. You just wouldn't want to connect your dots. All right. All right, we've arrived at what I'm going to call the hardest problem of the day. And it's because of what the information is that they're giving us. They're giving us A3 and A6. They're not giving us A1, which we need. They're not giving us R, which we need. So we have two variables that we don't know right now. So we're actually going to use a system of equations. Well, let me explain. We're going to use that formula on the board two times. Um, let's go ahead and use it with our first values that we're given. We know, uh, would there be one like this in the test? Like the graphing one. Like the oh, like the graphing one. I don't think there's any graphing ones in the test, no. But I don't remember if there's any like this in the test. If there would be one like this in the test, there would be one in the study guide, so don't panic too soon. All right. So we're going to put the negative 48 in for a n. We don't know a 1. We don't know r. But we do know n is 3. Does that make sense what I have done? So I put the negative 48 here. I put the 3 here. And I don't know him or him. Go ahead and calculate out 3 minus 1 for me. What would that be? That will make it look nicer. So that's my equation 1. We're making a system of equations. I would always connect those with brackets. Well, the new textbook doesn't seem to do that. All right, let's use a different color. How about pink? We're going to make a pink equation from this given information. So we'll put the 30, 72 on the left side. We don't know A1, we don't know R, but we do know that N is 6. Does that make sense? Go ahead and calculate out that 6 minus 1. 6 minus 1 is 5. I'd rather just put a 5 there make it easier. Okay, where's my Algebra 1 scholars? Who remembers substitution? What we have is a system of equations. We have two equations. We have two unknown variables. And you had three methods to solve these. Graphing, substitution, and elimination. Substitution is going to be our best bet on this one. Does anybody remember how it works? Yeah? Kind of, sort of. We're going to take one equation and solve it for one of the variables. Then what we will have, we will substitute it into the other. So let me just write out that our plan is substitution. So our plan is to use substitution. Our plan is going to be to solve equation 1 for A1. And then substitute in what A1 equals into the other equation. So here goes. If I want to solve this equation for a1, I basically need to move the r squared over. Do you know how I would move it over? I would divide it over because they are multiplying. Does that make sense? So that basically lets me know that a1 is equivalent to negative 48 divided by r squared. Doesn't make sense so far. I don't want to lose anybody. I circled it because since a1 equals the stuff in the black circle, this stuff in this black circle can get substituted in, in place of A1. That's the whole idea of substitution, replacing something with its equivalent form. Okay. I'm going to need a lot more space, so I'll just click this button. So the pink equation, once that black bubble is substituted in, will look like this. So basically my black bubble went here, and I wrote it right there. And what we have left, we can just solve for r, and then we'll know what r is. Sweet. Okay. Let's simplify down the r's a little bit. If I have r to the fifth up here, and I have r squared down here, two of them will cancel. And that will leave me with r to the third. Good. What would I do to move that 48 to the other side, the negative 48? Divide it. So go ahead and divide that for me. Let me know what you get.
perfect. And then how do I finish this one? Cube root. And that's math four if you've forgotten. It's been a while since we've used that button. So math four, cube root, the negative 64. You get negative four? We're halfway there. We figured out R. We still need to figure out A1. Who has an idea how we can do that? It's not too hard, actually. Plug it in, plug it in. Go back to that black circle. That's kind of another reason I circle it. So back up to the black circle. We know that A1 is negative 48 over R squared. So it's negative 48 over 16. What does that give you? Perfect. So we have all the information we need to express our final answer. Hey, for one ticket, can I have somebody tell me what my final answer would look like? Oh, I smart ones, did I? Um, Andrew? We saw the video. We're good. All right, we got our last formula of the day, and yes, we'll, we will do one problem with this formula and then be done. This formula I put up on my formula board and I called it shortcut five because we're kind of numbering our shortcuts. Shortcut five can be used if you need to find the sum of the first n terms in a geometric series. You have to really know the difference between arithmetic and geometric. So if it's arithmetic, use shortcut four. It's geometric view shortcut five. But these these things probably mean what you would think they would mean. So what do you think A1 stands for? Uh huh. What do you think R stands for? Because that happens twice. Common ratio. And then what do you think N stands for? Number of terms. That pretty much means the same thing it's always meant. Common ratio is new. Alright, we've arrived at our last problem. We kind of chatted that the prompt let us know that we're going to be using the geometric shortcut. So let me just jot down the geometric shortcut for these people at home. A1, 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Be very careful. You won't want to type all this in the calculator at once. It's just too many calculations. You would need parentheses around the top and bottom. So I just used my calculator for little pieces and parts. What do you think A1 would be? You can get it by putting the 1 in for i and calculating it, or you can just look at the formula. Didn't we learn today that this guy's the first term and this guy's the common ratio? So 4 is the first term. Does that make sense? Okay. 1 minus, I just mentioned that this guy's the common ratio. So what's the common ratio? 3. N is the number of terms we're trying to add together. So what would that be? Good. And then the bottom would be 1 minus r again. So do not type it in all at once. I'm going to verbally tell you how I would type this in. I do it in little pieces and parts. So I would type 1 minus 3 to the 16th. I would click enter. That's going to give me a very, very large number. Then I would divide it by, I would calculate out the 1 minus 3 in my head, get negative 2. So I would divide by negative 2. Also another very large number. It's like 2, 1, 5, 2, 3, 3, 6, 0. Are we matching each other? And then I finish by timesing it by 4. So I'll just put a little asterisk. Use calculator carefully. But don't necessarily try to type it in all at one time. The final answer I got is, and just check that you match me, 86093440. Do we all match? I'm going to do one thing real quick just to check ourselves. Yep, we're good. So, all right, so we're done. That was kind of long. There was a lot for the day, first day back from break, so my apologies, but that's just the way the, the cards fell.
do you need me to pause this to write anything more down or can I go to that homework slide? Put the homework slide. Yeah, question? All right, so here's your homework. It's in the book. Make sure you're showing all your work. And thanks for watching our video today. Have a happy Monday.